I'm, I'm doing therapy now and one of, one of my homework assignments. I need to do laundry every week on the same day, no matter how much laundry I have to do. That, that'll actually be nice, but I have a lot of laundry to do tomorrow. This is my last outfit. Um, oops. I'm back. Week number two. So last week I talked a little bit about how I was going to try riced vegetables and it went way better than I thought it would. Basically, um, I tried some riced cauliflower, just riced cauliflower, mixed it in with regular white rice so it was kind of hidden. I like to wait until that night to see if I get a good night's sleep or if I get to be nauseous all night long and watch Netflix. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Okay, now before I get started with what I really want to talk about today, I feel it would be appropriate to issue a trigger warning for anybody dealing with obsessive compulsive disorder, also known as OCD, or anything similar to that and you just happen to stumble across this video, I'm gonna go into some details that might be upsetting. So OCD, or obsessive compulsive disorder, is kind of a vague umbrella in my experience. If you go into a doctor's office, they are pretty set on their definition, but if you're walking down the street, or just hanging out with friends, the term is passed around a little more loosely. So it can be hard to know exactly what the definition is. A quick Google search says, OCD is defined as a tendency towards excessive orderliness, perfectionism, and great attention to detail. Again, the problem I have with that is those are all kind of vague and those aren't necessarily a problem. Orderliness is a good thing. If you are trying to apply for a job, you would put orderliness on your resume. Perfectionism, I guess that's generally frowned upon. And great attention to detail, that's another thing that y you would want to have, but you don't really want to have OCD. So what's the difference? And honestly, that's, something I'm still trying to kind of figure out. Where's the line between the obsessive behavior and the normal behavior? Take washing your hands, for example. Everyone should wash their hands, but no one should wash their hands until they're cracked and bleeding. I don't know if you can see that, but right, right in between there. Ugh. For me, the definition still isn't clear. What I can tell you though, is what I'm experiencing. So my OCD has come in the form of germophobia or something similar to that. Basically, I'm hyper aware as the definition said. Basically, I'm hyper aware of where everything has been and where everything could have been. For example, shoes. While wearing your shoes, you might go out to a restaurant. You might use the public restroom. The public restroom might not be that clean. You might then walk down a public sidewalk that is not that clean. You get in your car and you transport everything you picked up on the bottom of your shoes back to your house. Then you wear your shoes inside the house, <sighs> track it all through your house. And now when you decide to take your shoes off, you're walking barefoot through the same filth that was in the public restroom and on the sidewalk. Now I know, logically, those germs, the that filth, whatever it is, is getting diluted with each step. But the OCD I'm dealing with doesn't want to think rationally. I have two safe spaces. The, um, the couch downstairs, where my PlayStation is, and where I watch TV, 
in my bedroom. And I'm worried today that I lost one of those. I'm worried that I won't be able to sit on the couch again. Lie down. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Bam, bam, bam. I catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. I will travel across the land, searching far and wide. Teach Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. There are so many pathways that I can't even begin to describe in one short video of ways that germs, contamination, anything that might be gross feels like it's spreading towards me. The weird thing, however, is that I can be dirty. I can have my hands dirty. I can have my feet dirty. There are just certain safe spaces I have, like my room, especially my bed, I even stand up to eat because I don't want to sit on any of the chairs. So as you can tell, this is a huge energy drain, a huge time drain. Basically every single thing I do takes multiple extra steps. Another great example is the tripod that I'm using to record this video. The adapter for my camera I had to order in the mail. Obviously, you can't hook up a cell phone to a mic stand without something to link the gap. When I got the device in the mail, I had to take it out of the package, go wash my hands, reach inside the package to pull out the box, find somewhere to put it that was cleaner than an Amazon package, go wash my hands again. And I had to open the box, wash my hands again. And then when I pulled the device out, all that was to try and keep the device clean, by the way. But when I pulled the device out, it didn't feel clean. Whether it was objectively clean or not, I don't know. And maybe that's part of the problem. But I had to clean it. So I had to essentially wash it with my hands after washing my hands yet again, of course. All that for one little mic stand adapter. So as you can imagine, daily tasks just add up and I struggle to do basic things like eat and bathe. And if I want to do anything extra, like go to a doctor's appointment or heck, just go to the river, I have to think several days in advance just to manage my own energy because I know if I go into town, it takes me roughly an hour to an hour and a half to clean up once I get back home. And then if I start running out of laundry, <laughs> if I start running out of clean clothes, things get even more complicated. If I start running out of clean towels to take a shower with, things get even more complicated. Step after step after step. That's how I act on my good days. There are certain things outside of my control that can trigger more what I would call some kind of breakdown where I just, it's like all my energy is in a cup <laughs> and someone just goes whoop <laughs> and it's just all gone for the rest of the day, sometimes more. Uh, these can include someone taking out the trash and then touching a high traffic area like the refrigerator handle without washing their hands. It can also include someone moving something of mine without telling me or asking me. So I leave my bedroom and my vitamins have been moved. If somebody moves something of mine, the problem is I don't know if their hands were clean. I don't know if it was moved somewhere else before it was moved to where I find it. I don't know if it was used, if it was dropped. Too many unknowns. I can't, I can't mentally track all of that, so I shut down. I had three different triggers today. 
and I stayed in my room for the majority of the day. Shut down, stayed in my room. Then just as I was about to get up and leave my room, the uh, trigger number three came. I just go hide in my room if I can. I can't do that. I will just watch TV or play video games. For treatment, I'm doing quite a lot. It's very exhausting, but it's worth it. And it's working that much. So I'm seeing a psychiatrist. I'm pretty sensitive, so I'm taking half of the lowest dose. It was rough at first. I had some pretty bad reactions, a lot of mood swings. A lot of my stomach issues were flaring up on the medication, but that seems to have mellowed out. I'm also seeing a therapist once a week at a very regular time, which is nice. <laughs> I like I like my appointments always being at the same time every week. It makes things less stressful. Reach for the sky. The therapy has been a really big help. I've been working hard on trying to identify my obsessive reactions and interrupt them. So when I feel like I need to wash my hands, I will wait 30 seconds and then wash my hands. Over time, I'm going to increase that to 45 seconds a minute, eventually 10 years. I also have a laundry day now. Every Monday, no matter what, no matter how much laundry I have, I do laundry. The other thing my therapist noticed was that I spend about three seconds, itty bitty, in rational thought, and then immediately leave that to go on an irrational thought spree where apparently I really enjoy existing. So an example of a rational thought would be, I just washed my hands, I don't need to wash them again. I know they're clean. And then the irrational comes in and says, are they really clean? How effective is the soap? Is the water clean? All of these, all of these unanswerable questions that inevitably lead me to just wash my hands again. Or with food. The rational thought is this is a restaurant. They are required to have a clean environment. The irrational thought stems oftentimes from a rational thought of, yeah, but everybody's human. Their environment can't be perfect. If it's not perfect, what might be wrong with it? When was the last time they cleaned their dishwasher? When was the last time they cleaned their surfaces? What did they use to clean their surfaces with? Just exhausting questions over and over again. Now I identify the irrational thoughts, like that my mic stand, my tripod might not be clean. There's no reason for it to be dirty. I've only touched it with clean hands within the last year. If, if there is something on it, it's harmless. Well, I am sick but touching the mic stand hasn't directly hurt me that I know of. Even there, my brain is reaching for the irrational, reaching for the smallest possibility that the mic stand could be dirty or dangerous and that I need to wash it. So anyways, I'm identifying the irrational thoughts and trying to quiet them or replace them with rational ones. Even just talking about all this is making me tired. <laughs> but all that being said, I am making progress. I am improving. I am washing my hands less. I am going outside more. And I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get really excited. I'm starting to have some pretty big goals. Obviously, I'd love to go on a really big, long bike ride. Like, I'd love to cycle Tahoe again.
I'd love to go rock climbing. I'd love to go backpacking. But the baby step goals are good too. So I want to start writing music again. The other thing that I thought could be fun, uh, my therapy appointments aren't that far away. So it could be fun to, to work up to riding my bike to therapy. It's nice because it's, it's, it, it's on Friday morning, so it would be relatively traffic free. If I'm early, I lost a lot of muscle, so I don't really know how fast I can go. But if I'm early, I can just go to a cafe or something. If I'm late, that's bad. And I should probably tell my therapist that I'm planning on this. I'd also just really like to go to the river. That might actually be easier. I'm gonna move that one up on the list. <laughs> and then I'd like to go on a hike at the climbing areas. There's a few different ones near here. Maybe I'll try a hike at each one before I try and go out for a day of climbing. That logistically is gonna be a big step. I could try bouldering first because with bouldering, all I need is the crash pad, shoes, and chalk. That could be easier. It might not work out to be easier, but it could be easier. I'll have to think about that. And then of course, you know, the big three, climbing, camping, cycling. All three in one day. <laughs> Climbing. Camping. Cycling. I'd also like to start doing yoga again. I like yoga. Anyways, I'm sure I'll have more updates on the OCD issue in the future. It's still all kind of new to me. I'm definitely much further along with my diet than I am with the OCD. And I'm hoping the diet cleaning up my eating will exponentially help the rest of my health, but that's just gonna take time. I guess I've gone on long enough. I'm sure there will be more. Thanks for watching. Okay. <laughs>